Okay, I got seven o'clock. Uh, this is a town board meeting for September 14th. The first thing on the agenda is a public hearing. Adoption of the Town of and Sidewalk Trail Master Plan map is an amendment to the 2021 Comprehensive Plan. <coughs> this, uh, unfortunately, uh, the legal notice did not hit the paper. And so we're going to reschedule this for Wednesday, next Wednesday, September 22nd at 6.30 p.m. And there will be resolutions 12, 13, and 14, I think it is, that we will lay over to next Wednesday because it's all related to the, to the public hearing. Is there anybody here tonight that came for that public hearing by chance? Anybody online that came to the meeting for the public hearing? Okay, thank you. At this time, um, we'll continue the public hearing uh, again until Wednesday, September 22nd at 6.30 p.m. I'd like to call uh, tonight's regular town board meeting to order and pledge of allegiance. Uh, Ron, you lead us, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. Liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Ron. Uh, next item on the agenda is the town board meeting minutes for August 24th. Oh. Second. Motion to second. Any comments, corrections? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, privilege of the floor or public concerns? Uh, on the room, privilege of the floor? Anybody? Yes, sir. Um, please, for everybody, please state your name and address for the town clerk's record. Uh, Michael Putman, 7820 Elmwood Circle, John Moore, Elmwood Circle, Terry Taylor from Elmwood Circle. We were here two weeks ago about our water drainage issues and came back to see what had been hashed out. Okay, I'll let the highway superintendent uh, cover what he's done today. <clears throat> what we did do is go out there, as I stated uh, at the last meeting, we went out there where that uh, drain track from that corner there, put it to the north where it goes to the wetland. Uh, all of the uh, vegetation was cut and removed from that ditch, uh, as I stated, to help relieve the water when it's in there so that it could exit there quicker. That's basically where we're at uh, on that drainage there. As far as water that's coming into there, that that is not a scenario that's that's going to change with the way the drainage is laid out uh, down through there. And we did ask uh, our engineer to look at that site also, but it, there's just not been enough time with everything going on. So we did clean northbound. Did you say you have cleared out the ditch? No, north of where the houses are. That the last house on the corner of. Uh, uh, no, Elmwood yeah. there to the north. The vegetation was cut out of there and removed from the ditch. I did not disturb the base of the ditch. Uh, however, I did clean the vegetation out so that it would flow. Last week? Well, mm -hmm. that it's I, I started it the day after the meeting two weeks ago. Okay. I mean, it's still there, right there at the corner where the, the drain pipe. With the storm drain coming down through from that one circle and down through that ditch, nothing's happened there. From that ditch to the north. Well, was right there. Are we on Laviano's property? All on Laviano's property. Okay. That was past my house. Past my house. So you haven't come all the way up to Terry's house? Not, not behind your house, it's off to the property line, yes. Up to where the storm drain dumps in, you can mark that off. The property line there at the hedgerow. At the hedgerow. We can look at this afternoon. That said, uh, yeah, I, I went out and uh, Don showed me what his crews have done out there to that ditch uh, on the Rob Laviano's property. Uh, that this has been all thinned out right up to the back of the property lines. There's a hedgerow, and then your property is right on the other side of it. 
that has been cleaned. Um, it looks like we don't have any restriction of flows through there, um, which we did have to begin with. So it was a good improvement by the highway department. Great, thank you. Okay. Sure. Question on uh, certainly not an engineer, John Moore. Uh, and uh, but just simplistically looking at it, and the original design were past that point, obviously. But we've got this huge retention pond, and the way it seems to be designed, water inflow, I don't see or sense as much going into the pond. We've got a huge deep basin that's only being filled up very insignificantly. And thereby any water coming in is flowing into during the bad storms, you know, into uh, our yards. But I'm curious as to why things aren't designed so it could run into the pond be a retention pond, holding water until the storm passes and you have a gradual outflow of that water and eliminating, you know, with the extra work being done in town line road, the hard surfaces and the drains is just aggravated, you know, the issue that we had originally. And uh, you know, I don't know if there's any other recourses or thoughts, engineering could be done. Cleaning out the vegetation, you know, that helps certainly for that time and place, barring any good storm. But vegetation certainly is going to grow back and back and back, just like the mowing that's done around the ponds, you know, and, you know, it's done maybe every six to eight weeks, it seems that you have someone going around and mowing it. That vegetation just grows up quickly. It isn't a permanent solution. I don't know if there could be piping that could be done to move it into the pond or somewhere beyond where a uh, nuisance to the property owners. So, Bill, correct me if I mistake this, but the ponds that are to the west of their property are designed to take the water flow from Auburn Meadows yeah. and, and hold it in the yeah. of that slower rate. Right. Yeah, and that is something I think that um, we tried to explain last time. But there are ponds there. They were not built to alleviate the waterway that is behind your house, uh, but they were required to be put in by the developer for the development to the west to retain that water coming from the west and make sure that obviously there's no negative impacts to the waterway as it was existing before that development occurred. And that's really how the stormwater regs are set up by the state. Um, they make sure that whenever there's any development, the planning board can, can explain even more if you want, but um, that there's no negative impact or any increase in water flow off of those properties when they do get developed um, by the use of stormwater structures and even stormwater treatment when it becomes necessary. Um, so there is, we did look at the ponds and that by elevation, I mean, it's not practical to think we can take the waterway that's behind your house. I think it's even in a lower elevation uh, to the pond. It is a shallow pond, it's to vent, uh, meant to detain water, but not hold it there. Um, it's only meant to hold it there when there's a high storm event and then slowly allow that water to discharge out. So. Uh, another comment that was brought up last week, just while I'm on it, is that whether we made any significant changes to the drainage patterns and anything along Townline Road, and we did look at that. I don't see that we made any major changes that would impact the waterway. Um, but I do think that what Don's done so far in addressing the vegetation that's that may have been trapping some water in there is a first step. And then let's see what happens at this point. Have we had any, I mean, we've had a couple of rain events since we did the work. Sunday night. Mm -hmm. we've, yeah. had, we've had rain events. Uh, I don't know. I have not been in your backyards to see what the what water you've had since the last few water rain events. Uh, and, and that said, uh, we have experienced <clears throat> some abnormal rain events that is going to appear to have amplified the situation in your backyard as opposed to what would normally have been there over the last couple of years. So, um, understandably so, uh, you would relate it to the construction on Town Line Road. However, the water flows on Town, Ryan, Town Line Road have not been altered as to the directions of flows. Uh, again, that is something we cannot do. We need to maintain water flowing in the areas and the directions 
that they normally flow. We can't just go and reroute water wherever we so please. So this water that's draining from the grapes along the town line road. I just see the surface grapes. I don't know underneath it. Underneath where that's that, being directed. That uh, where that's being directed underneath that grapes would be in the same direction that the normal ditching along the roads would have directed to water. They would be directed to the same northward direct and water flow areas as they were previously. Because previously they were directed there with ditches. Now the road water is coming out of the road is being directed to them same areas via pipe. Today, behind Terry's house, there was water in the ditch just sitting there, wasn't running anywhere. We could have had that. I mean, when, when, when the elevations out, are flat. Yeah, but he cleaned it out, he said. Yeah, the water was going to flow to the north of there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if it flows to the north, it should have left right behind Terry's house because the north is like right there. How much water was sent in there? I didn't measure it, but it I'd have to go back and, and look. Uh, I don't know if there's an area through that wood line. And in that set, I would be getting into your backyard to clean it up and I will take a look at that and see if there is a small area there where I can address between uh, that pipe that you're talking about that comes out from uh, Elmwood back in the catch basin on the corner that comes out and dumps into your backyard. Uh, I will take a look at that and see if there is uh, additional cleaning to be done right there. Other than that, like I say, <clears throat> I've managed to make the water discharge to the north up to the wetland area by clearing out the vegetation and cleaning the bottom, the shape and bottom of, uh, of the ditch line. Uh, again, water coming in from the south is not something that we can change. Hopefully we don't keep getting the rain events that we've been getting. Uh, I'm sure we can all agree that them have been somewhat abnormal uh, as to what we've been used to over the last Several years, uh, see the last few years, uh, we've been getting some crazy rain events. So, as I said, I will look at that from that drainage pipe from your backyard through that hedgerow and see if there's a little bit more I can do there. Uh, just to have a fish. We may have had an issue in the winter too with snow and the meltdown where we get uh, similar, nearly if not as bad as say, July 17th. Storm where all the water just moves from the ditch in towards our property. And if I may speak, uh, representing Robert Fredericks, who was in a reader today, he had a big concern about a huge pine tree that his roots going into the ditch and he has fears of that tree being eroded way enough that it would blow over top of past into his house. He's lost four or five other pine trees over the years. If I'm not mistaken, is that tree on the the side of the pond of that ditch. It's on the side of his home, you know, on his property line. I mean, we can, we can look at it and see if it's an issue that, that would be within the town or you are right away uh, to do something with it. But I mean, if it's on private property, there's not a lot I can do. I kind of understand what you're saying, but the issue is that it's the water is beyond any control of his is threatening his property. And if there were a recourse uh, financially, so that that threat could be removed, uh, it certainly be looked at you know, favorably. It, it is something I will look into and I will talk with the town board and see uh, where the actual placement of that tree is, uh, try to assess how much the stream is actually affecting uh, the stabilization of that tree and see where the town. We, what information I get back to town board, I will bring Dan out with me as well to take a look at that. And then we will address the town board with what our feelings are when once we look at it. As you do that, uh, it's not so much at the trees, the other trees he had, uh, top oak, but it's just, you know, too much water for that type of tree and they just turned brown and died. You know, so either which way, 
and, and that said, the trees have lived there for that pine tree's got to be what, 40 years old, 50 years old, and it lived there that length of time. So I don't understand uh, why all of a sudden they start dying. And again, we have ash trees that for some reason have been dying around town, uh, whether it's just the amount of water. Uh, again, that is out of the town's control as well. I mean, we can't regulate how much water we get rain wise. Uh, we can't regulate how much water runs down that ditch. We can't change it. All we can do is try to remediate the, the ditch line so that it flows at its best capacity to the north to relieve water so it don't build up there. Get it uh, transferred to the wetland uh, as quickly and efficiently as we can. Town board, any comments or questions? The water is coming off Farmington Town property. Why can't you change it? Because the DDC would not allow us to dig new channels. Everything's everything's mapped. You want to contour, like most of our GIS system is two foot contours. And there's, I mean, 20 years ago, you could get away with. But the current regulations of DDC we have to be very careful. Could it be communications between the world board and the DEC? They're probably completely unaware of you know, this issue. Thank you. I still don't know how much we can do in that section when it's so flat to begin with. You know, we can't dig deeper on your end and then Laviano's ditch has got to go even further deep and then where does the water go right. after that? All the elevations have a lot to, to play with. Um, yeah, I, Bill, I, 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 you're absolutely right, Pete. I mean, it's, it's been an issue throughout many areas of Farmington that Farmington is very flat. That's why you have lots of great farmland here, but you also have a lot of drainage issues that go along with it. And um, you have <clears throat> Beaver Creek that also runs through there. It's a drainage area. There's a number of drainage areas that goes up, you know, up through Town Line Road and Route 332. But in between all of them, it's very flat. So, well, uh, and, I, and I don't know that you would even have enough fault. If we were to try to go to DEC, for example, and make improvements, you have to have enough fault to retain water during a storm event, which is even difficult to do something like that. Because you don't have any elevation change to hold water, it just basically is all very flat. So, short of getting, you know, making sure that the swales like Don's kind of focusing on, the vegetation does hold back a lot of water from time to time. Trees and things that get in there, even sediment, you know, over the time is going to hold that water back. You're saying that that wasn't there before. It's really the only thing that that would have changed, um, you know, from years before. Besides the fact that we're having like Don said, significant rain events that we've never had. That's the truth. I believe Mr. Putman uh, brought in a topography map last time, and the elevation for Townline Road was, I don't know, about 30 feet or so. I mentioned 30 feet, but I don't think we checked that. Right. That, that water coming off the Townline Road, if you could dump in, maybe not to the bottom of the time, but like a higher uh, piping. You know, maybe halfway up the time where when we have those storm events, then that piping could you know dump in at the south end of the time. We can't you know, raise up on from other property. We're not allowed to again like the DJ, we're not allowed to just take water from other property and dump it on that pond. The pond was purpose built for the development to just take water from there. We can't just redirect water from anywhere we want into a pond that's mm -hmm. purpose built designed for a specific property. So we can't put and I was not talking about, we can't put anything else out of the bottom. You know, <clears throat> just, I got a question. Bill, would, before we do anything to DEC, would it be a proper step maybe to work out or to contact the Ontario County Soil and Water folks and have them take a look at the area also? Um, you could. And Renan can correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I think they tend to try to focus their efforts in ag areas and uh, areas that are in the ag district. I don't know. Um, they may look at it from the perspective that, okay, what runoff is coming from 
different farm fields up above that could do some different practices as far as farming that goes. Could give it a shot. Certainly couldn't hurt to, to reach out to them and see if they would look at it. But I do know that nine times out of 10, they're not gonna focus their efforts and their equipment and personnel to come to their backyard and try to fix the situation. But they may be able to you know, give you some insight as to whether they think any of the farming practices upstream may have a, had an impact on the drainage. Okay. I, I think I'll just Practice ask, that, ask Dan and Don to coordinate. Uh, I can't think of the guy's name right now. I, I, I have them come out before to look at some work on here, so I will coordinate with the uh, county and get that set up. Okay. At least I take that step. That Thank does you. take some time to get it onto their schedule, just so that you guys are well aware of that. That probably won't be done by the next week. By the time I get them to come out, take a look and give us a report back. All right, we'll give that a try also. The retention pond, before that was built, that whole area was wooded and was a gradual slope, both toward our property and toward the north. When the retention pond was built, now you see the area has been built up. So, toward our property, everything now from the retention pond. Flows directly toward us. So the retention fund was not a, didn't do anything to help us. It, it hurt our property. Again, yes. actually, where the retention fund is now, uh, you are correct, that area was brought up somewhat and flattened out to the sides of that retention fund could be brought up to accommodate uh, all the water to the west that was sheeting across all of that property toward your property and utilizing that same swale to go north. In the building of that pond that started to stop the water, you have a very short distance of water that we're getting uh, to the east of that pond now. However, prior to that pond, you were getting all the water that was sheeting a substantial difference distance to the west, which that pond is now collecting, retaining, and discharging at a very slow. So actually, you should be getting less water from that westerly direction than you ever got in the past. Yeah, but before it was wooded. So the water, if it flowed in there, it didn't flow right back out immediately. It had to work its way out. And the water coming down from Town Line Road now goes towards our property and toward the north, when it gets the retention pond, it doesn't have a choice, it goes toward our property. Well, well it, it could never go west. When it came off town line road, it always went to that swale and down that swale. Any water coming from the west now is stopped by that detention pond. And that is part of the reason that that detention pond is built. Uh, as you just mentioned, there used to be trees and vegetation along there. Those that trees and vegetation went away. Therefore, a pond was made to be put in there by the developer because they removed those trees and that vegetation. Therefore, any water in them roadways and whatnot to the west is collected in pipes brought to that pond to prevent that water from sheeting at a quicker rate toward your property. So in effect, you are getting less water from the west than you ever got in the past. As far as the water coming from the south to the north, is at the same velocity, same volume, I should have said, coming from the south up through that stream. But it's not directly towards our property where the water was just a gentle slope. Well, that, that back and the water there. coming out of the streets over there is going to end up in the pond a lot faster than the water that fell on the open farm ground before. It had to work its way across slowly. However, as you guys just mentioned a, a moment ago, that that pond carries a low level of water. Therefore, uh, that is telling us that uh, our engineers did their job and that pond is doing its job with all that development over there. It is collecting and retaining that water before it gets down to that swale. <clears throat> okay, so I, I got the building department and I was going to be trying to reach out to the county and soil and water. Talk the property and see if there's anything else they think that can be done. Keep in touch with us. 
Thank One you. last question. Yes, sir. Uh, in the tank at the uh, north end of it, uh, I don't know what you call it, it's big concrete abutment there or whatever, it's got like an outlet hole in it where when enough water gets into the tank, it obviously was designed to capture that water and then to move it. Right. And I haven't seen it then out there when it's wet and running, but is there water coming out from that lower piping that's running in behind Mr. Frederick's house? So it's capturing water from the pond, excavating it towards, you know, our property area, you know, on the uh, east side. And if you walk up and you actually look at that, that's referred to as a dis, uh, discharge structure. And if you look at the, the side toward the pond of that discharge structure, uh, engineers regulate, they do a topography of the land, figure out the flow of the water. There's an inlet on the pond side of that structure right. that's this big. That is the flow that the engineers have come up with that can actually flow out of that structure out that pipe and down that ditch. And that amount of water that is allowed into that structure and out that other pipe is equal to or less than the water that that property put into that uh, that stream prior to that point. You will notice there is a frame in it right on top of that. I don't think you've ever seen water to get into that. Uh, that would be a even a larger storm than we've gotten in in the last few years where the water level could ever get up to that and, and be released through that hole. So that that outflow in, in reiteration is regulated to allow equal to or less water than what came off of that uh, that sheet off that property prior to the installation of that and development. Okay, thanks again. Moving on. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we're, we're still in the room of the floor of public concerns. Anybody else here tonight? Anybody online? Public concerns? We do have one comment online that came through on our chat from Mr. DeRue, D E R O. He lives at 5795 Parkinson Townland Road, which is actually a Canandaigua resident. Uh, he would like to talk to the board about the town sewer. And would like to know if any update on if the possibility of his property would still be looking to, for him to have down the floor. Okay, so I think this probably goes back two or three months. Um, he's on the Canandaigua side. That's within the Canandaigua sewer district. So I did have a conversation with the town manager, Doug Finch, and I thought I asked him to have the high superintendent from Canada and Don, our high superintendent, talk about that. Um, there's not an easy plan on how to flow from his current septic system through a sewer line. And I, I know even Robin McDonald is here tonight, who uh, you know was involved in this early on too. So it's it's a point where the sewers either got to go back southwest to Staplegate and hook in the sewer there, or there's going to be some expensive hook up underneath Town Lane Road to get to the current sewer line. Like correct, Robin? Yes. Yeah, the, the elevation of where those houses are is low enough that it's pretty much uphill no matter which direction you go out of it. So um, I don't, I don't have elevation. To it. I don't know whether the sewer and sail gate is low enough by the time you run it all the way from his house to get gravity pitched to there. Uh, it has to be down to the ground 10 feet rather at least. And going across the road, uh, that's private sewer. On the other side, um, this Stonehenge area. Oh, it's the apartment. And uh, there's manholes in there, and that all flows toward Mount Max Drive. It goes that way. So uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, Greg looked at it and came up with it only 
way they would be able to do it is if they put in grinder pumps or some pressurized type of system yeah. to do that. So at this point, I would say they would have to contact Canadigla as a starting point if they wanted to entertain something like that. That's, and then if you do that, if it's just for the one house, you're crossing other people's property. Quite a lot, you know, by them easements and everything else. Right. So, I, hopefully, Mr. DeRue was able to, to hear that. So, our town engineer, Bill Davis, said probably the only solution is a grinder pump, small pump station setup that would then force uh, their individual sewer or even the houses next to them would have to force it to a location on a, a current sewer lateral somewhere somewhere within the system, but really does need to uh, reach out again to the town of Canadaigua. And if I remember, uh, I'll try and reach out to them tomorrow and let them know it's still an issue. All set? Okay. Uh, reports from standing committees, public works. Yep, public works met this morning right here in this room at our usual time. Got updates from water and sewer and highway and parks. I'll start with water and sewer at the treatment plant. Uh, the, uh, the pump station on Wagon Road, uh, they're looking to put in some new submersible pumps. And our grade is look, uh, working on the design there. The flow meters, they have now been moved to uh, Farmington Grove subdivision. Get some more information there on I and I. Uh, the belt press, uh, the VFD belt may need to be replaced there. Uh, work on UV system is complete. The hot, uh, let's see what else has been. The hydrogen number two brushes are installed. Uh, the aeration system in the aeration pond is finished. Uh, we're working on uh, quotes for the clean out of the tiger one. And, uh, let's see, MAP is working on uh, 332 design for replacement work there. Uh, the sewer main and collar road with the collapsed pipe. We still got the pumping system in there, bypassing that until we get the design work and repair work on there. Uh, the paving at the sewer treatment plant has been completed. Uh, let's see, there's a little bit of restoration work left yet to be done on 96. And uh, the work on rehabilitation for the manholes has just started this week. That's it for water and sewer. Highway. Highway has ongoing maintenance going on. Uh, they've been working on drainage work on and they were town and Falmont Road. We just talked about that a minute ago. Uh, it's just in drainage work, trail work, cleaning. It's being done around town. Uh, they've been removing brush around our road signs, keep them nice and clear. And they had to use some flaggers for the crack ceiling that's being done around town. Extra people flagging traffic control. Uh, the roadside mowing continues on 332 and the county roads and also on other town roads. The parks are uh, building and park maintenance ongoing all the time. Trimming and mowing in parks, clearing brush along the trails. Uh, they've been striping crosswalks and striping at athletic fields. And that's about it. Let Don talk about a couple of leaps of stuff for him. Here you go. Thanks, uh, John Operations. John Operations up this morning. Um, a couple of resolutions are going to have to read at the next meeting due to the public hearing. Um, but we still have several others. Uh, again, Beaver Creek Park going well. Uh, the maintenance building and the pavilion have uh, got substantial completion, and they're working on uh, finishing some of the paving there and getting the uh, grass sorted out for the fields. We can talk about the sidewalk uh, application. Uh, that was the public hearing we had, but it is uh, the applications. I think uh, Ron's got it pretty well done. Readjusted some of the funding numbers. Um, Looks like the total cost of the project is going to be roughly 2.2 million, and the grant that we're looking for is for 1.7. It's an 80 20 share. <clears throat> so we'll look at the, get the public hearing done at the next meeting and uh, get the resolutions passed. Delaware River, we're still waiting on hearing uh, from the judge. There was a meeting 
uh, between the uh, lawyers uh, about two weeks ago. The Auburn Trail project, uh, we did order the um, signalized pedestrian crossing signs once they're in, get those installed, and then um, be looking for a final closeout of that um, project. <clears throat> Uh, Hathaway's Corners continues uh, to move pretty quick. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of building going up in there, a lot of burning same issue, keeping the building park busy. And the town code updates, we have a, a resolution tonight uh, to address some updates to uh, chapter 64 <coughs> with the construction code. Uh, Matt, they've just been very busy with inspections and permits and they can address that. Thank you. And I report some other town officials, uh, supervisor. The tentative budget, we've had our budget workshops, it's very near completion. Uh, the plenary budget is the next stage, and uh, that will be due to the town board two weeks from now on September 28th. Um, reminder to everybody that we do have two pickups for sale up front, and we'll receive uh, sealed bids until Thursday, September 30th at 2 p.m. The reason I'm kind of saying that is because our minutes will be posted online on YouTube and people will be able to see that along with everything else we've discussed in the week. I mean, parks. Okay. Uh, drainage, Kennedy Department of Town Line wrote for the benefit of the board, uh, the 18 inch pipe that drains the roadway from Barton up through Birchwood drainage to it in a northward direction until such time as it crosses the road to the south side of the road into the normal swale, uh, where it continued to go eastbound across the road, and that crosses behind uh, the houses on the east side of Maplewood. The 18-inch pipe that continues to drain in a easterly direction, bringing the water from Birchwood up through beyond Maplewood and continues to work northbound where it will cross up by Janekos uh, property there in that general proximity to where then it goes north and through Stonehenge. That is in fact the natural flow of the water that has always worked in them ditches. Uh, the roadway uh, as engineered, the piping simply collects the water in the roadway and carries it to the original or the same uh, northerly direction drainage uh, wells. That said, that segment of about uh, 18 inch pipe between uh, Maplewood and 332 uh, was completed this week. Uh, that will drain over by Genecos. That will go down to by Stonehenge. Again, as where the swales always drain, ditches always drain down through there. Uh, at, uh, um, the 20th, 20th or 21st, we have a mill coming in there that's going to uh, grind some of the center line for the room with the binder. We do have the base going in later this week, Thursday, uh, hopefully. Uh, we'll get the base on that north edge of the road. With the milling going on the 20th, the 21st, the 22nd, of course, a binder from 332 down to where we left off with the binder uh, on the earlier stages. Uh, from that point, uh, we got some mailboxes to put in. Uh, we've got another drain with about uh, 200 foot of pipe to put in up by uh, the, the hardware store there. We're going to get rid of that lake on the corner. Uh, that will be uh, piped down again, crossing right there at Stone Hedge, which the general flow of the land, other than that one little dip there, that's the direction of, of water uh, drain. So, we do continue to move the water in the same directions that it's always been down through there. Beaver Creek Park continues to move forward. Uh, I was out there this afternoon with Tom and Pete. Uh, I think the general consensus from all of us is we'd like to see a little more green, but it is coming along. Uh, fixtures, light fixtures, that's an ongoing progress. Uh, some of us have been hearing from the neighbors with the uh, lights that stay on, lights that aren't working. Uh, it is a progress and lights have to be commissioned 
Uh, it's not just a matter of putting a dust or gong sensor in them lights. Them lights all work through a node system that they have one light communicates to the next and the next. So there's it, quite honestly, even it's quite a bit more than I fully understand. But that, that's where we're at now. Uh, I had a couple of uh, conversations via email with uh, Nate, uh, who was our contact with this today. Uh, their crews, where I, they've been out of town here uh, lately, as the linemen been working with uh, storm outages around the area. So that's why we've been kind of on the, sitting on the back burner with some lights that been on for a week or so. Trust me, the residents notice when the light stays on all day as, as quickly as they do when they don't work at night. Right. And that's all. Uh, do you have any delivery data of the flashing signals there at County Road 41 and Auburn Trail? I have not. I've got an email out to them that went out today requesting I want to hear back from them. Uh, I had no no idea at this point. Okay. I, uh, I'll bring everybody up to speed via email as soon as I hear back. Okay, thanks. Okay. Um, so that's Friday, I officiate a wedding. That's Tuesday, I'm officiating another wedding. And currently our office is working on some like spreadsheet to help the building department with their grant for all the maps that are down there. Uh, doing some tax, tax map numbers with the addresses to make it guess, easier for them when they are scanned to identify when a certain address starts and stops with the maps. So that is what we are working on. Okay, good thanks. What are short? Well, we had some good news today that the uh, easements for ESL for the uh, sanitary collapse over there have been signed and sent. So we should be able to get going on getting that bid out and replace that. Yeah, so the, we did add that as a waiver of the rule for tonight's meeting so we could approve those easements. Um, as soon as everybody on the engineer side is is good with the drawings. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure know. that everything's set with the only thing that you can see went back to eight inch pipe from the town right. just because of the availability of the pipe. Um, and that, yeah, and so I think the way we left it was we would order the pipe and the connections and the manholes yeah. and then just reach out to the contractors for a RP for a Prices from at least three contractors to install it. I've got the pipe held. Uh, got 100 feet of pipes that the core made. Um, tomorrow I'll get the drawings out for the manhole builds. All right. Good. On the same so, subject, I'll just chime in that we also got confirmation from DEC we don't need their approval. Since we're going to be replacing everything just in kind now, so that's uh, great news. So I just talked to Dave uh, from our office about uh, reaching out with DOT, very trust and trying to get. Right. That, that's the only approval we would be waiting for at that point. So, so there's about probably one man hole in there, right? Yeah, now. there's not much, so it should go quick. And then um, we talked about some of the contractors we want to reach out to for. Proposals and David's going to get to you and assist to see if there's anybody else we want to come out to. So. Yeah, there's only that one manhole by turning the pipe out at 332, um, not using that one manhole that's definitely in the easement of that corner by like moving it up and putting that house manhole there. It's just barely in the right away. Okay. Thanks. Building is only. All right. Uh, as the supervisor mentioned about our meetings, uh, we have officially are on Zoom, for, and then we broadcast them up to the YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is also a link on our website, so that people can go to our website and then go to our YouTube channel. And the board uh, board meetings that we're hosting up there are the town board, planning board, and the ZBA are the ones that you can find up on the uh, YouTube channel. Um, going over to the building department, uh, in August we issued 85 permits, bringing our total to the end of August to 723 permits for the year. Uh, inspections for August, we did 300, bringing total inspections to 2,052 inspections. 
Uh, stormwater MS4 inspections, 19 of those, and 18 zoning inspections for audits. So things are still very busy down there as uh, Nate mentioned. All right. Thank you, Ron, Director of Planning and Development. Planning Board. I skip you every yeah, time. Okay. I'm going to, right. to wear a different I'm going to make sure my secretary puts a gap in there. <laughs> I have to wear a brighter shirt or something. Um, uh, <laughs> Next meeting uh, tomorrow night um, is the uh, preliminary site plan for Loops Road Industrial Park Lot 4, and as well as a special use permit for that uh, lot. Also, a continued site plan uh, for the uh, Farmington Commons Lot R2, um, where you want to put the uh, credit union. And then um, the storage expanded storage over here on Colette and Denny and that one there and then we uh, we have the preliminary site plan for Gerstner Medical off of uh, Quittenshire there off of 41 Quittenshire and we've got a few things we've got an LOC estimate on the villas uh, letter of credit for auto wash and then uh, resolution on Myers RV construction schedule and so far that's it I don't know if you or the staff knows, but we get more parking spaces at Denny Drive and their revised plans. Yes. At least 10 or 12. Yes. Okay. We're, we're getting better. Uh, but it's still preliminary. Oh, and, so yeah. Uh, we still have to provide us a little bit more information. So, again, that's something the planning board can look at tomorrow night about that parking. Yep. So well, they still have to combine with lots or something too. There's some other things there. Okay, no run. Director planning and development. Uh, the cap grant is coming together nicely. Uh, we do need to uh, include the sidewalk trail master plan, and we also need to uh, include the capital project. <coughs> Uh, commit to the funding for the town share of that. Uh, I want to submit this to the state on the 28th, the day before the deadline, just so that given the state of affairs, there's no glitches that knocks us out of the box for not getting it in on time. State of the affairs in the state? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know how that happens. <laughs> Murphy's Law. Yeah. And then the uh, town ops report was published, uh, posted today on, on the website. For everyone. Thank you. Our engineer, Bill. Yep, just a couple of things. We're still waiting on DOH approval for Brickyard Road tank um, at the state level in Route 96 332. So we'll follow up with them and try and get the dead squared away. Um, I already noted that we'll be able to avoid DEC approval on Clint Road, so we'll work with DOT. <coughs> and we have a wetland delineation uh, necessary for the water main project along Route 332, which we sent in that information. Yeah. Um, and so then, we did discuss that in public works, and we can just go ahead and you know get the delineation on order. Yep, I think that was relayed to them today. So. Okay. And then Don, I just was going to give you a, a heads up that there is a pond in Stablegate on the west side of Stablegate Drive that does drain across the town line road to that. Um, it does go to the pond. It goes behind those people's houses. Maybe check with Fletcher to see if there's a need to clean that pond now. That could be another thing to look at. Or I could <clears throat> contact Fletcher or whatever you think best. But. Yeah, because that comes out of that pond. Goes behind the house, I said it's once the sewer goes out to that big pipe that goes underneath the road and goes into the sand. So it's not cleaned out and it's just flowing through, then that can be done. I'll take a look at it all night, Mr. Fletcher, and see if I can gain any ground. If not, then we'll take the next step. All right, I sounds good. Cool. We won't mention who lives in that neighborhood. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, the assessor's not online tonight. Uh, recreation, they had a good uh, summer, as I mentioned two weeks ago. Uh, a lot of kids participating and 
that are looking forward to uh, either a Halloween event or, and or uh, Santa and Mrs. Claus event. Uh, and finance committee, nothing extra there tonight. Communications are on file. Reports and minutes are on file. First resolution is authorized the acceptance of the monthly report of the supervisor for August 2021. So, second, motion and light, second by Steve. Panels, questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Number two is a confirming resolution authorizes successful completion of a probationary period for wastewater treatment plant operator training and grow effective September 5th with a pay increase of 75 cents per hour. So, second. second. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Three is a resolution authorizing establishment and directing final and letter credit for RGE Station 168 project in a total of $3,733.04. dollars and four cents. Second. Any comments or questions? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Or is a resolution accepting a proposed maintenance bond to be established for halfway corners phase 1A dedication set number two in a total amount of $90,997.90 and directing the filing thereof with the town clerk's office. So, <coughs> second. Motion to second. <coughs> Questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 I use a resolution authorizing the town supervisor to sign an agreement with precision group to slip line two segments, one on Hook Road, one on Shum Road, with a cost not to exceed $30,000. So, so, second. Motion to second. Any questions on that? All in favor? Aye. 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 Six is a resolution authorizing acceptance of donation from the Farmington Historical Society. In the amount of $1,250 to be used for restoration of Power Cemetery, $625, <coughs> and Hathaway Cemetery, $625. So, so motion. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Seven is a resolution authorizing the town supervisor to sign a professional service agreement for the integrated systems for the water and sewer department at a cost not to exceed $7,500. So, second. Okay, so this is the, a year and a half ago when we first went with an integrated and put up $7,500. That's the hourly fee for any maintenance they have to do or if they have to let in BAS into the system, that type of stuff. So this $7,500 is, is the cheapest hourly rate and it'll, it'll probably last another 18 months for the first $7,500. You said hourly rate. You mean annual rate? No, I didn't say hourly. I said it's it's seven hundred seventy five hundred dollars that is used up in an hourly rate. Oh, okay, I got it's it. the cheap. Uh, it's the I cheap. Got, I got it. I got it. You got like four levels, right? Right. And the seventy five hundred dollar rate is a seventy five dollars <throat> an hour versus if you only spent $950 on a block of 10 hours, it's $95 an hour. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Eight is resolution from the final payment application of BLM for the Beaver Creek Park Maintenance Building, and that includes the bathrooms. So moved. Second. Motion to second. And my approval of this, we own it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any concerns if we block my intent? No. no. Budget. Yeah, the whole budget amendments. So number nine is the budget amendment for seasons to parks over time. And number 10 is the budget amendment to transfer money from the personnel and the water department to personnel. So, motion in a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. <coughs> Levens, uh, resolution authorizes acceptance of easements from AD Real Estate Development LLC. It will require a roll call vote. So, 
Motion and second. And this is section seven and eight and which we've been waiting with bated breath for a while. Supervisor Bingley. Aye. Councilman Bowerman. Aye. Councilman Harrington. Aye. Councilman DeSalle. Aye. Councilman Bowles. Aye. <clears throat> resolution passed. Thank you. Number 12, the resolution authorizing the established of and filing a letter of credit for the auto wash project 6214, state route 96, in the amount of $46,258.78. Second. Motion to second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, as I mentioned earlier at the beginning, uh, resolutions 13, 14, and 15 all pertain to the public hearing. It was supposed to be tonight. And we'll take them on the agenda, but we'll lay them over to next Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. when we have the public hearing. And then uh, the map plan is part of the comprehensive plan. Any other comments or questions? All, right, all in favor, lay them over. Uh, aye, aye. <clears throat> 16 is a resolution accepting amendments to Chapter 74 of the Farmington Town Code, directing the drafting of a local law scheduled a public hearing to be held on Tuesday, September 28th. At 7 p.m. So moved. Second. And we'll hear from you then. Right? Do they all have the draft? I know I saw it. Um, I believe Brian did email that out to everybody. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So we got time to look at it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Seventeen's resolution accepted the amended decommissioning plan for the Delaware River Solar Project dated September 14, 2021. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Again, this is <coughs> today's date, which was the latest uh, comments back and forth between the attorneys and Dan Capitello. Uh, I think we got everything lined up. I we only heard from the judge on his decision. <laughs> both sides, but both sides have. Okay, listen, I don't think we're going to entertain any more revisions on that at this point. We're okay. It's good to hear. With the draft, yeah. Did I have a motion on something? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Any other comments, questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 18's resolution accepting a total of seven sidewalk easements and four properties from four properties located along the north side of State Route 96, two properties located on the south side of the <coughs> Way, one property located along the east side of the Tensor Road. So, so. And around, did that seven number stay that way or did it go to nine? That's the nine. Okay. So we'll just, the resolution is correct. Right, just change the agenda. Yeah, the title didn't get corrected. Because we got we got three today. Three in today. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Thank, Thank you. Take care. What is the actual resolution we get another thing? No, the resolution is is correct because Marcy changed that. Um, oh, yes. Can you just quickly read to it? <coughs> yeah, it lists each of them one through nine in the last now, therefore, we resolve. So Was this going to be one of the waivers that you mentioned earlier? No. Or no? There's a waiver stuff? Yes. <coughs> That's what the ESL. All right. Yeah, of course, you did that one the last minute. All right, so we got a motion to second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
19, resolution recall and amend resolution 260 2021, authorized Palestine Industries uh, project for PS31 E1 power pedestal. So, motion second. So, all this, it was the resolution, original resolution was PS31, but it said different location. Well, uh, Hamptons, it said Hamptons. It's, it's not so that's all we're doing is correcting to say high street and Aldridge. any other questions comments all in favor aye aye 20s the abstract 17 of 2021 to pay bills general fund fifty five thousand two hundred sixty three dollars and sixty eight cents highway fund fifty three thousand seven hundred eighty eight dollars and thirty four cents Beaver Creek Park, $27,735.86. Storm Drainage, $879.59. Lighting District, $51.05. Sewer District, $952,812.21. Water District, $22,413.94. Payroll deductions, $313.92. For total abstract of one million one hundred thirteen thousand two hundred fifty eight dollars and fifty nine cents. A motion to sell. Second. So, and a motion to second the sewer district. That's three hundred thousand dollars paying the school tax, and it's six hundred thousand dollars on another payment for the um, sewer plan expansion of this of 2014. What was like the exact number on the school tax? No, it's lower than what we put that. So I think I moved it higher. It's lower than what was actually. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, no train under $100 at this time. Discussion on uh, line in the way, sewer and water bills. Uh, we did receive a packet. Um, it's the head court address, um, past on the corporation in Rochester, and these are all uh, apartments, right? Hail court. Yeah, off from off from Elizabeth Way. Line away, it's line away. Yeah. So unfortunately, there's like 17 of them, I think. They claim they never got the invoices. But the same company got the ones for our <laughs> bill. No. They flip for it. Could have gone to Two different clerks that <coughs> handle it and pay the bills, but again, uh, as soon as Jane saw that they hadn't paid by the due date, she sent out copies of these bills, which then they copied and sent to me and asked for relief on the penalties. Does the homeowner want to stay? So they all, they all, they, they're billed separately, but they all go to the same address. Yep. Yep. They all go to 6 Prince Street. In fact, they're all labeled Hill, Hill Court LP, 6 Prince Street, but each building has its own account number for each apartment in this case. So it's seven, 17 bills because they have <coughs> separate water meters. Whether it's water and sewer. Okay. I would say it's the town's fault, but even if they do, it's the same thing as everything else we do. Yeah, I mean, it, mm -hmm. when they got another set of bills, Allo yeah, Alloway is part of the Past Home Corporation. Again, I don't know if it went to the same Prince Street address or not. But, you know, the actual letter came from. Half, half stone corporation for under East Avenue. There's more than 17 townhomes on my plan. So they got the bill for like half of them and didn't get the bill for the other half of them? Is what you're trying to say? But they would have known because there's. Again, I, 
as I'm saying, there's, there's more than 17 individual units on line away. So like twice they, that they night. They shouldn't have, they should have questioned why they didn't have the hand. I'm saying they should know there's like 30 something apartments on line away. There's only 17 bills and something happened. Yeah, count 17. <clears throat> So basically, it says I'm writing you in regards to the missing original invoices never received. On August 27, we received copies of the invoices. Uh, Jane at the office told me to send you a letter as she did several other companies about not paying late fees. We should not be charged late fees due to undeliverable invoices. If anyone from your office check the post office about this matter. How are they undeliverable? Wow, well, they're basically saying, saying like they paid right. up. Right, exactly. Yeah, they're basically saying is they didn't receive it. Did we get 17 <laughs> back, some backups of undeliverable? So they got like half the invoices were lying away, I'm assuming. So they said they didn't get the original notice. Right. So they said they didn't get the original notice, paid the bill, but yet they got the reminder that the bills were overdue. And they all have the same address. Right. How does that work? So it happens every time. Because it all gets sent to the same place. And all those go to just the one file. Right. Are they all mailed separately? No. no. I think she puts them in a packet. So, but they still have that set of bills on that together. So shouldn't that right. trigger somebody to say, where yeah. are the other bills? Again, I don't know. All I know is there's 17 accounts here. It may be. Two, two apartments per. I don't know. It's not that we did. It's the, the bill was sent out. I don't see any reason to make an exception in this case, and you don't. I mean, if they, I mean, if you remember right, over the serotonin process, they went to switch companies to pay their bills. They didn't tell us. Right. And we sent it to the old company, and then they said it was our fault because the new company didn't get. The invoices, but you didn't tell us to send it to a new address. We denied that, so we right. denied any of that. Mm -hmm. All right, that's it. Um, I won't get to it tomorrow, but the next day I'll, I'll get to it to uh, tell them we're denying the, the request to uh, waive the uh, late fees and penalties. Uh, nothing for executive session tonight. Any objections for one resolution for waiver of the rule? No. Hearing none, I have a resolution authorizing acceptance of easements from 1100 corporate drive. And uh, basically, this is an easement we've received just today. And uh, it's for the ESL property at uh, Colette and corporate drive where our sewer line is collapsed. So, so okay. move. Second. Second. Move a second. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So between Michelle and Dan, all these easements we got in here, I want to take them all and let Jeff Graff file them for us at the county. So, so we give the Dan to go file in person? When you're, when you're finalize everything. Okay. Give them the Dan, get them over to Jeff's office. I will make sure to get there. Is there anything else to be brought to the town board tonight? Anything online? Really no, no, those are all taken care of. I just can't clear on that. I just I just saw there's more there. So yeah, no, we're all good with comments. Okay. Motion adjourned. So moved. Second. All in favor. Thank you, everybody. See you next.